Thank you, yeah. Good morning, saints. God bless you. It's good to see everyone this morning. I trust you've come expecting. And man, God always meets with his own when they gather in his name. It's a wonderful guarantee. And we want to welcome anyone who might be visiting with us. Just uh, trust that you feel at home in the service this morning. Amen. That God will be your source. Whatever our need is, he's here. If it's just more of God, he's here to grant more of God this morning. Amen. Why don't we sing this together? How deep the Father's love for us. I love the words to this song. Amen. Let's focus on what we sing this morning and enter into worship. So when Brother Tom comes, he just has free, free course to minister the word this morning. Amen. Oh, how deep the Father's love for us. How Blessed be the name of the Lord. His wounds have paid your ransom this morning. How great is our God. Amen. Can we sing that? How great is our God, the splendor of a king. The splendor of a king. Oh, let's worship him this morning. Clothed in majesty. Hallelujah. 
He's given you mouths to praise Him, hands to raise to Him. He's worthy of it, saints. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Who was and is and is to come. Hallelujah. He's the beginning and the end. The Alpha, the Omega. He's above all things and before all things this morning. Worship Him, saints. Blessed be your name, O God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Worthy, worthy are you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. You are great. You do miracles so great. And why don't we sing that song together as we prepare to go to prayer this morning. Amen. You deserve the glory and the honor. Oh, you deserve the glory. Let's just worship and saints as we sing this song. And the honor, O oh Lord, we lift our hands to worship as we praise your holy name. You deserve the glory and all the honor. service for us in a word of prayer. There's a request from our brother Gil and sister Karen asking for their neighbor, Masiko Deo, I believe her name, who has a cancerous growth uh, removed from her neck. He's asking we would remember her in prayer during this time. And brother Norm is asking we would please remember sister Louise Wood in prayer also, feeling very weak, stumbled this morning. And man, do you ever just get tired of seeing Satan hamper people's healings? Amen. And you just know that the word is true and God is faithful and there's a healing there. And let's just remember our sister Louise and bind together God would give her strength this morning. Amen. And do something supernatural for their family. Amen. Brother Norm, Sister Louise will bind our hearts together with you this morning. Amen. Thus far and no further. Amen. Let it be, Lord. 
I mean, that's what we have to believe, saints. We have to believe there comes a time when we just don't allow Satan to encroach on our land anymore. And God steps in and does the supernatural. Amen. Let's believe it is already done because it has been completed. It's a finished work. Amen. If there's a desire on your heart that you'd like from the Lord this morning and you'd like to lift it before him as our brother Ray comes. Amen. Would you come, brother Ray, and remember the offering also this morning. God bless you, brother. Bless you. Gracious, most eternal, heavenly Father. How grateful and thankful we are this morning to be called your children. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. Though it doth not appear what we shall be, yet we know when you shall appear, we shall be like you. It is with this blessed assurance this morning that we approach your marvelous throne of grace. Lord, as the people that have been bought by your blood, saved eternally to be sanctified by you in this end time. It is in the same self-talking, Father, that we approach you this morning with thankful and grateful hearts, willing to express our love for you, O God, because you first loved us, Father. Now this morning we recognize that you've opened a predestinated place of fellowship within your blood lord and it is in that same token that we come with needs with burdens before your god knowing that father if we call upon your name you said you would no wise cast us away lord should this morning your children have penned requests onto a paper but lord jesus the greater than solomon is here the one who died for us the one who is still touched by the feeling of our infirmities. You said in your word, Father, if you be lifted up, you will draw all men unto thee. Now this morning we bring these requests before you, Father. With joined hearts, Heavenly Father, we are trusting you that once again show yourself as the miracle-working God, the one who knows the end from the beginning, the one who has ordered our steps thus far, Hitherto has the Lord blessed us and kept us, O God. Father, we are once again coming, O God, saying, Lord, for any unwritten request this morning, Lord, you search out all the parts of our hearts, Father. Those things that we know, we we don't even know that we need, O God. You are the all-sufficient one this morning. In you we stand complete. In you we stand, Heavenly Father, justified. Lord, it is in this, Heavenly Father, this completeness, uh, redemption, Heavenly Father, that you have given us, that we approach thy throne of mercy this morning. Your children will stretch forth their hands to give, O God. How we pray, Lord Jesus, that you bless them. Bless their going out, bless their coming in. Bless their places of work, Father. If there be any snares, the enemy that they set before them, we rebuke the devourer for your sake. Heavenly Father, bless the tithes and offerings. Bless them for their intended use, even for the feathering of the gospel. And even as we feel your presence among us this morning, we pray, Lord Jesus, that you continue to prepare our hearts, O God, for the coming down of your word, that there might be a bedding ground, O God, in the manger of our hearts, for you to come and take permanent residency, O God, and once again continue to complete a complete work in us. In Jesus' precious name we pray to say, start with us and finish with us, O God. And we shall be careful in all to give you praise, glory, and honor. In that matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. You may have your seats. Play, uh, I just want to thank you, Lord, for letting me hear your word, a little song that we sing often, Amen. but as we were just in prayer in the minister study before the service, it was just so on my heart, it's like, I, I'm so thankful, Lord, that you gave me ears to hear this message. Isn't it wonderful, saints, out of all the billions of people in the world, think of it, it's just incredible, the election of God, amen, don't let the opportunity pass you by this morning, amen. 
Let's sing this. I'm going to ask the choir. They would come. We're going to sing No One Like Our God as our brother Tom comes to minister. Amen. Brother Paul, you can come drum also. And Amen. We just want to worship him this morning and receive from the word once again. So maybe as we sing this, the choir could come and get ready to sing along with us. And I just want to thank you, Lord, for letting me hear your word. What have I done to deserve such glory revealed in me? Thanks for that special night when I saw your glorious light. This is part of the service, so please sing along with us. Amen. We just also have the words of Brother Joseph, if you don't mind, please. Before him, he forms every star and he 
for the Lord is my keeper. Hallelujah. Is that a revelation to you this morning? Join us once again as we sing it then. I walk through the fire. I walk through the fire and he is beside me. I pass through the water and I do not fear. The Lord is my keeper. He is my strength and my song. Mighty our God, our lovely Lord Jesus Christ. Let's bow our heads in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we have assembled this morning to give you all glory. Lord, honoring the resurrection this morning, knowing that the tomb is empty, stones been rolled away, but God, you're a living Savior, a living God, one Lord that is present amongst your people even now. And so, Lord, as we look to you, the author and finisher of our faith, would you come and speak to us so individually, so personally, Lord, that you could punctuate that word within our hearts, that we are determined, Lord, to live, live for you in every area of our lives. Bless the people of they've assembled together. Bless those who have joined with us on the internet and those that are away ministering the word of God brother Tim brother Kim laboring in India today brother John up in Grand Prairie pray that you'll be with them in a very special way and for us Lord break the bread of life we ask in Jesus name amen amen God bless you nice to see you this morning thank you choir I don't know if it was announced, but Brother Murphy Wong will be ministering this evening. So I know that you want to be here for that. Uh, Brother Ed, Brother Biscal, our pastor, will be speaking April 1st, Easter morning. That'll be, I'm sure you won't want to miss that. You don't want to miss that at all. So we're looking forward to that. And um, we want to do what make mention Brother Cobus. Brother Cobus, are you here this morning? Hiding behind Brother Michael. Well, God bless you, Brother Cobus. Rave your hand like this. There is an unsung hero for the bride of Jesus Christ. I uh, wrote you a note when I was in China because you were giving me an update on what was happening in the message translation. And um, it's marvelous to see because I, it really affected me knowing that if the message would have come in Chinese, what would I have done? I'd learn Chinese. But what a, ch- what a chore that would be. And as the saints have have been able now to have the translation of this message in their language. You're doing a great work, Brother Cobus, and God bless you for it. Over 2,000 and some odd sentences were translated this week, I believe. Uh, the Fijian language was finally, a book is finished and completed. So I think this is a marvelous thing. Amen. I mean, I, 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 I was spoiled. Yeah. I was spoiled. 
I had the privilege to travel with Brother Ed back in 1975 to Ohio. Met a wonderful saint, Sister Gladys Dow. And Brother Briscoe was studying in his room, and Sister Gladys had come home for volunteering at the hospital. And uh, she said, Tommy, Brother Tommy, do you want to come with me? I said, sure, Sister Gladys, I'll come with you. So we walked through the house, and she opened up a closet door, and she says, I want you to have a copy of these spoken word books. They're the first off the press, and I paid extra for that. <laughs> well, you, you would have thought I had been given a whole pot of gold. I took those books from, I think it was volume one to volume nine at the time. I took them, and I've laid them on my bed just to read the titles. <laughs> That's how much I love the message. And it hasn't changed. And I feel it's, it's our, our duty and our privilege, Brother Cobus, to be doing what you're doing. That the uh, bride of Jesus Christ can have this message in their language and in their hands. It meant gold to me then. It's gold to me now. It must be gold to them. When they can finally see the word of God in their language. So God bless the laborers and all that have worked with you over these many years. God bless you. Amen. Without any delay, let's turn to the word. I have a number of scriptures I'd like to turn to. If we don't finish, it'll be all right. Maybe part one or two or three or four. So we'll just look to the Lord. Isaiah chapter 60. Isaiah chapter 60. And uh, we'll read at verse 18. Amen. Isaiah chapter 60, verse 18. I hear the pages still rustling, so we'll wait. Violence shall no more be heard in thy land, wasting nor destruction within thy borders. But thou shalt call thy walls salvation and thy gates, what? Praise. Praise. Can we read that one more time? Violence shall no more be heard in thy land, wasting nor destruction within thy borders. But thou shalt call thy walls salvation and thy gates praise. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his word. You may have your seats. In Zechariah, you don't need to turn to it, Zechariah chapter 2 and 5. The Lord speaking, saying, I, saith the Lord, will be unto her a wall of fire. What a protection. What a protection we have. Isaiah chapter 21, verse 11. If you want to turn to it, I'll be reading verse 11. Isaiah 21, verse 11. This morning, I might as well give you a warning, don't fall asleep, because it will be anti to what I'm be preaching. I'm going to be preaching on living in the promise, prophesied promise, and for a subject, stay awake. <laughs> living under the prophesied promise, and for a subject, I'd like to preach on staying awake. The Bible says in Isaiah 21, 11, the burden of Duma, he called to me out of Seir, watchman, what of the night, watchman, what of the night? The watchman said, the morning cometh and also the night. If ye will inquire, inquire ye, return, come. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing to know that God wants to be your wall of protection. Amen. And it's imperative that we understand that God has restored to us this wall of protection. And anybody that goes away or around that wall of protection, you're an open target to the devil himself. We must stay in God's provided place of worship. Amen. We must stand protected by the word of God. 
And we need to be alert and awake to realize that we are living in an hour that has been prophesied to come. Amen. To watch for something, to look for something. In the Greek, it's Gregorio. It's a command to every believer, and we'll be going through various scriptures. But that command when it says to watch for, to look for, to be awake to, it means to stay awake, obeying even with a sense of urgency. And this is what is happening, saints. Satan is coming in this area and is taking away the urgency of your believing. You say, well, we've gone on and on and on, but it's going to stop one moment. And you can't get lethargic. You can't get slothful. And maybe this morning it's a little bit of an a admonishment or encouragement, more positive. For you to be on the edge of your seat, realizing we are closer than we've ever been. You say, Brother Tom, I've grown up in this message. I've been here for 40 years, 50 years. Stagger not at the promise promise of God. Don't let any unbelief come your way. We are of Abraham's seed. Faith seed. To be then watchful, to watch, means to be vigilant. Vigilant. Energetic. It's a strong trust in the power of God where you watch with confidence, no anxiety, believing that God will carry out his part. So now there's going to be an encouragement. God's prophesied the promise. And you're living under a prophesied promise of a rapture, of a change in the body. If God spoke it, there's nothing can stop it. So there's no anxiety to this, saints. It's just purely believing, watching, staying awake. Not getting caught up in your work and drama of life. I'm sorry. There should be an energy in you that is actually moving you. To want this body change. Yeah, you're so lackadaisical. Laodicea makes us lax. Where once you used to shout and jump, and then yet there's nothing in that either. Because I've seen people jump and shout and go back into the world. That has nothing to do with it. But this should be a living gospel. It's a strong trust in God. When you're watching, there's a strong trust. Nothing is going to shake you. Nothing is going to move you. You're a watchman on the wall, and you're watching for God to fulfill his word. I will be a wall unto you. I will be your defense. I will put a wall of fire around you. Now you tell me, who's going to get at you? But if you let it down, don't let those broken walls come. And we'll be getting into Nehemiah. We have a strong trust. In other words, in this spiritual warfare that you are in, that is out to destroy mother, father, sons, daughters, this is a spiritual warfare. This is not a walk in the park. If 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 Israel... In the Old Testament, it had enemy after enemy trying to, to, to destroy them. And yet today, still trying to destroy them. Do you think that you're going to get away with not having that battle? But who's your protection? The Word's your protection. The Bible way isn't your protection. Thus saith the Lord is your protection. In other words... You're in a spiritual warfare, and there is a devil that's trying to destroy you from fulfilling God's prophesied promise. 
But I want to let you know you're living under it and nothing's going to stop God from fulfilling it. Period. Nothing's going to stop God from fulfilling his prophesied promise. You're living under it. You're in a spiritual warfare. And the Greek says it's imperative. Do you get the point? It's imperative, Paul is saying, that you shall not be apathetic. Apathetic. Oh, I just come to church or I just go to work and I just complain about everything and do nothing. Apathetic. Lethargetic. You're in a warfare, and Satan is going to come in Laodicea to try and water down your experience in God. In other words, in this spiritual warfare, we, know, we, we are not to be apathetic. We are not to let down our guard, and we will not become a victim of our enemy. Amen. Come on. Stay with me. We've just been here five minutes already. I shall not be a victim of my enemy. God's on my side. God's on my side. God came into your life through this message. Listen, saints, it's, we don't believe just another message. We believe the message. We believe the word. Not an interpretation, but thus saith the Lord. It's very imperative that you be awake this morning. Very imperative that you understand at any moment we could be changed. It's very imperative that you have an experience with God. It's very imperative that God becomes a reality to your life. Very imperative. Don't let the guard down and don't become a a victim to your enemy. There's outside forces. This is all the Greek dictionary. There is outside forces that are out against you. But it demands you when you are watchful to be alert and vigilant. So we're just stating some definitions that... The scripture has called us to do when we are to be watchmen or we're to watch. We're to be alert. Stay awake. Because if, it, if the enemy came and you're asleep, the blood of those that died are on your hands. Now we understand Israel was prophesied. Because they'd left the Lord and they worshipped idols. They'd gone after the world. And they were prophesied by Jeremiah that you'll be in captivity for 70 years. Is that true? We know the book of Jeremiah. And we understand that he was prophesying to the people because you've left God. The enemy's going to come and is going to tear down your walls. It's going to tear down your gates. But there will be a time... When the children of Israel shall return. Shall return. Under a time of restoration. Under the promise of God. You might have a torn down wall today. But I want to say to you that there is a gospel or there is a word that rebuilds your wall. What is a wall? A wall is what? To keep away or the enemy out from. To separate you from unbelief and stay in believing. That is a wall. When those walls come down, the enemy can come right through. And what's he out to do? To seek to kill, steal, and destroy you. When those walls come down, the wall of protection, when you go out to the world, it's a big surprise that Satan gets at you. No big surprise. But I want to encourage you this morning that there is a word that has been restored under a prophet's ministry to turn us not to ourselves or even to William Branham, but to Christ himself. And he is your protection. He is your wall of fire. Can you imagine? They knew Jeremiah had prophesied. But even their deliverer or one who was going to let them go from Babylon was also prophesied 150 years before. 
Isaiah had prophesied of King Cyrus and puts his name in the Bible and says there will be a king that will rise up and allow you to go back to your land. They were living under prophecy. They were living under prophecy. And throughout the ages, we've lived under the prophecy of Malachi 4. We've lived under the prophecy of Revelation 10.1. We've lived under that prophecy. But there comes then a reality. When the prophecy becomes material. And that's what I'd like to speak on this morning. Living under the prophesied promise, staying awake, and watching that prophecy come material. Remember, David had to speak to Goliath and said, today you're head. Abraham had to say, the lad and I shall return. John had to say, there's one standing amongst you that I'm not worthy to unloose his shoelaces. They had to prophesy. But when they prophesied, there had to be a fulfillment of their prophecy. Did Isaac come back with Abraham? Did the head come off of Goliath? Was there one worthy that walked in the presence of John? God fulfills his prophecy. And we are living under prophecy. And may God stimulate us to be watchful, not lethargetic. Stay awake. The enemy is on your case. Stay in the word. Stay alive. Encourage one another in the faith. Isaiah. 44 and 28, I'll just read it. That saith of Cyrus, he is my shepherd, he shall perform all my pleasure, even saying to Jerusalem, thou shalt be built, and to the temple thy foundation shall be laid. And thus saith the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have holden to subdue nations before him. Prophecy. Prophecy. Even before it happened, prophecy. Prophecy. Second Chronicles 36 and 22. Now in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of the Lord spoken by the mouth of Jeremiah might be accomplished, the Lord stirred up his spirit of, king, of Cyrus, king of Persia, and he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom and put it also in writing, saying, Thus saith Cyrus, king of Persia, All the kingdoms of the earth hath the Lord God of heaven given me, and he hath charged me to build him a house in Jerusalem, which is in Judah, who is there among you of all his people? The Lord, his, the Lord, his God be with him and let him go up. Prophecy. Before it even happened, prophecy. Laying there. His name prophesied. Ezra, one and one. Now the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled. The Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, and made him a proclamation throughout all his kingdom. Thus saith king, king of Persia, the Lord God of heaven, the one that had called him, was going to liberate the children of Israel. Prophecy. Prophecy. Nothing is going to stop God's prophecy in being fulfilled. Listen to what the prophet says here. He predestinated it, this by his foreknowledge when he proclaimed in Malachi 4, it's got to happen. When he come over and predestinate anything to happen in his word, he has to prove his word to be so. When he predestinates anything to happen, and says it will happen. He knows that seed will be there just at that time. Now you just have to come to the realization, am I that seed? And once you come to that declaration, nothing is going to stop you from fulfilling this prophesied word. Now listen to what he says now. He has predestinated a bride. So tell me, is there going to be a bride? Is there going to be a fulfillment, a bride? What is she? She's the bride word. Nothing's going to stop the bride from becoming the word. Now watch. He says that the predestinated, he's predestinated bride. She's going to be there. 
There is going to be a rapture. She's going to be there. He's predestinated it by his foreknowledge. See, there's nothing that's going to stop it. Prophesied to him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne. Prophecy. There's going to be overcomers. You might as well be alert, stay awake, be energetic, and say, I'm one of those overcomers. It's been prophesied, I shall overcome. No enemy, no devil, no weapon formed against me. You might as well make the declaration, saints, because it's a prophesied word, and that word has to materialize. It has to. A virgin shall conceive. That word had to materialize. There will be a King Cyrus. It had to materialize. There's going to be a bride. She's materializing. There's going to be a rapture. I am the rapture. And people are so dysfunctional in this day. It's Satan on your case. You need to drive those devils out and start building your wall. You have your pity parties. You have your complaining you do. Just wake up. We are in a battle. It's a spiritual battle. We're fighting for your life. Romans 13, 11, if you allow me, I've, I'm, I'm going to be very quotatious, as I've said before. I'll be very quotatious. That means I'll be quoting a lot. Scripture and prophet. But stay with me. Don't fall asleep yet, please. Stay awake. The enemy is on your case, and you can sleep already in a service like this. There has to be some lacking in your spiritual experience. I'm looking for a rapture. I'm looking for that change because it's been prophesied. I'm expecting it. Paul says in Romans 13 11, and knowing the time that now is high time to awake out of sleep. That's Paul writing to Romans here. To awake out of sleep. For now is what our salvation, I know you know the scripture. For now is our salvation nearer than what when we believed. But then you say, well, Brother Tom, I've been saved for a long time. Is that exactly what salvation means there? You just glossed over it. Well, I've been saved and I've been awakened. Well, is that exactly what that salvation, we're nearer our salvation than we've ever been. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. Let us put on the armor of light. So for now, our salvation is nearer than when we believed. Now, are we talking about our, our salvation the day we got saved? What are we talking about? What, what is Paul writing to the Romans regarding this salvation? Salvation here is meaning signifying an entire deliverance. It's high time to awaken to your entire deliverance. It's your entire deliverance. Not those little imps that have come by you in the last week or the last month. Saints, you've conquered those. That's why you're here. So salvation signifying a deliverance, an entire deliverance from indwelling sin. It's a perfect sanctification. It includes, that word includes the resurrection of your body. So we're nearer than we've ever been. It's time to awaken. We're closer to our salvation. It's, we're closer to the change in the body than you've ever been. So, but I've been here. I've been to church. And saints, it's time to press on. Time to press the mark. Time to run the race. It's not a time to slacken off. So this salvation signifies a total deliverance, an entire deliverance from indwelling sin. It's a perfect sanctification, totally cleansed. And it includes the resurrection of your body and the glorification of your body, soul with Jesus Christ in this great world to come. We're nearer to that than we've ever been in our lives. 
And that is why there's an urgency because I see people falling asleep in the faith. Whether you travel around the world or whether ever you see it, they're going away from the truth. And the truth has come to set you free. Do not water this gospel down. This is an, not a waterless gospel. You've got to keep that water away. It's not watered down, saints. It's a building up of the faith. People will try and water this gospel down. It doesn't mean exactly what it says. It means exactly what it says. Exactly what it says. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 6 says, Let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be, what? Sober. Let us watch. Now, Paul is emphasizing the watch, the watch, the watch. As the Old Testament emphasized the watch, the watch, the watch. So when you watch, you're awake. When you watch, you have a sense of urgency. When you watch, you're ready for the enemy. We have a strong trust in the power of God that has delivered you, will keep you, and take you away. Amen. Be vigilant, saints. Just be vigilant. First Thessalonians says, as we just read, 5 and 6, Therefore, let us not sleep. You waken your children up. You have your prayer meetings at home. You have your Bible studies around the table. It's not a time to slacken up. It's a time to be vigilant. You say, I got no time. What's worth, what, is, what, what is worth more than that? What, what in your great scale of life is more than consecration, dedication, giving God more? I, I'd, I'd really like to know. So let us not sleep. Let, as do others. Now, I want you to take a look at that word, others, as do others. Let us not sleep, as do others. So what is Paul is basically saying, let us not sleep like the others, but we're not going to be asleep. Let us not sleep as others. So I took a look at the word others. What does others mean? Others, in the Greek, means the refuse. Don't sleep like the refuse. Or garbage. Or debris. Or discarded matter. Don't sleep like the discarded matter. But Brother Tom, you're, you're getting very strong there. Well, just a minute. I haven't got the cannon fodder yet. So Paul called it others, which is the refuse, the waste, the debris, the discarded. A prophet in this day called it cannon fodder. Let us not sleep as others or as the cannon fodder. The Bram said the Holy Ghost has been here since the resurrection of Jesus Christ and the coming forth of Pentecost. He's appeared through the ages, getting a remnant of people together. The rest of it is cannon fodder. I'll just tell you that now. It's fodder. Ages, down ages, that'll mix with the smoke out of torment. Yes, sir. It will take a born-again experience, washed in the blood of the Lamb, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. Or they'll never take a rapture. Did you get that now, saints? Did you get that? Here's what a prophet of God says, an unchangeable word of God. I'll tell you now, the rest of it's fodder that will mix with smoke out of the torment. Yes, sir. It will take a born again experience. Washed in the blood of the Lamb. Sanctified and filled with the Holy Spirit. Or they'll never make the rapture. Does everybody understand that in plain English? Born again by the blood of the Lamb, sanctified by the Word of God, filled with the Holy Ghost, entitles you to rapture. We're living under that prophecy. Let us not sleep as others. The debris, the waste, the discarded matter. Let us not Sleep, or as the Greek says, as the refuse of mankind. Cannon fodder is an informal derogatory term for combats 
who are regarded or treated by government or military command as expendable in the face of enemy fire. That's your government sending your sons and calling them fodder. Because they know they're going to have losses. They just want to cut the losses as best they can. And that is called fodder. Soldiers regarded or treated as expendable in battle. Their lives were not considered important. And they were just called cannon fodder. I want to tell you, there's not one cannon fodder here. Come on. You might as well say it. I am not cannon fodder. I am going in a rapture. I've got a born again experience. I'm sanctified by the blood. And I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. And I am not cannon fodder. We're in the battle. That's right. But I'm believing for all of you. And we'll preach like all our will go in the rapture. I wouldn't know why you would want somebody not to make the rapture. Brother Bram said in recognizing your day in this message, as a minister of the gospel, I cannot see one thing left but the going of the bride. I cannot see one thing left but the going of the bride. And the bride has to be taken away before they can recognize what happens. They're bound. They're scattered. I mean, they're scattered and blinded and gathered. But what's left? It's the bride to be taken out of the way. Waiting for the going of the bride. Think about it, saints. Waiting of the going of the bride. So the prophets of Revelation 11 can tell them or call them to the Feast of Trumpets to make them recognize what they have done. So how close are we? It's time to be urgent. It's imperative. It's imperative. This is not, get it out of your mind. This is not a weak need gospel. If mothers and children would go to the Colosseum and give their lives under the anointing of a lion. And they would run to the crucifixion. Because they were now under an anointing. What about us? What about you? What about me? Under an anointing. And God gave to the church. Everybody listening? Ephesians 4 and 11. And he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come into the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. You're living under prophecy. Lord, let me fulfill your word. Let me be urgent about it. Let me be concerned. God has given into the church, as we read, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. For the edifying of the body, to the building up, till we all come into the unity of the faith. The word of God is not come to divide you amongst yourselves. To devour one another. Calling you to the what? Unity of the faith. No big eyes, no little U's. Nobody special, everybody special. Is everybody on the same page right now? When the walls had to be rebuilt under Nehemiah, mothers helped build the wall. 
Children help build the wall. Daddies help build the wall. Everybody had their part in building the wall. Nobody exempt. I'm sorry. You can't hide in your little corner and say, I don't have a part to play. You have an integral part to play. You have a part to play this morning. We all have a part to play. Do not think that you're some trodden down something. You are an integral part of the restoration of God's word. You're an integral part. Let's turn to Nehemiah. Let's turn to Nehemiah. Oh my. He was living under promise. The children of Israel had gone. They'd already left at the, to rebuild the temple. And now he wanted to know. He had a burden. He had a burden to see how his brethren were doing in Jerusalem. He had a burden. Hello? Hello? Come on, Nehemiah. There's some Nehemiahs and Nehemiahs this morning. Concerned. Because the Bible says in chapter 1, verse 2, that Hanani, one of his brethren, if you take a look at the commentators, they say it was one of his brothers, personal in his, his family lineage. He came, certain men of Judah, and I asked them concerning the Jews that had escaped and were left, in, uh, left of captivity and concerning Jerusalem, and they said unto me, the remnant that are left of the captivity there in the province are in great affliction and reproach. He said, how are you doing, Ernie? How's everybody around you doing? Praise the Lord. Next person. Next person. All right. You have to come to the conclusion. But there's some that aren't doing so wonderful. But I want them to turn their confession to being wonderful. Because now you're under a prophesied promise that there's a restoration going to take place. And there's people that are burdened to see you come to your manifestation. They're not willing to see you in disrepair. Depression. Get out of it. Call on God. Watch God move on your behalf. If he can part a Red Sea, he can deliver you from anything. Amen. He can deliver your son, your daughter. He can deliver anything. People sit back and there's no urgency. They're not watching. But that's what the word has come this morning. Just to stir you up in the faith. That we could be of one mind and one accord. Here he was and asking, concerned, how's the church doing? How's everybody believing? How's my brothers doing? How are you up there anyway? Malcolm, are we doing good? Amen. I got a nod anyway. That's good. So he was concerned. How's my brothers doing? And it came to pass when I heard these words, what did he do? He sat down and he wept. How we do it, church? Let's get the reproach away. Let's get the afflictions off of you. Let's unite ourselves as a church, as a body of believers concerned one for another. But many people are only concerned about themselves. Because that is what Laodicea has produced. A crops of memes. A generation of narcissistic people. They're not burdened like Nehemiah was of their brothers and sisters. They were only burdened for themselves. And what they need. And what I want. And the prophet said... True Christianity is living for the person beside you, behind you, and across the auditorium from you. But it's all about me. No, it's not all about you. It's all about the body of Christ. How's the brethren doing? Well, some are under reproach, and some are depressed, and some are, don't know what's going to happen. Well, then I'm going to do my part. I'm going to do my part. 
That's all you have to do is do your part. Maybe it's a prayer in the morning. Maybe in the afternoon. Maybe it's visitation. Come on, church. We are a body. We are not individuals. We are connected together. You have to be concerned about one another. Not your little world and your little life and your little island. But that's what Laodicea is doing. Not concerned about your neighbor no more. Not concerned about the person next to you no more. I'm sorry if I'm getting down to where we're living, but I want to know how the brethren are doing. I want to know how the body's doing around the world. I want to know that we're pressing forward. I want to know that I'm living under prophecy. I want to know that there's church moving forward. So it wasn't customary for Nehemiah to have a long face. But this was such a burden on him that when he came into the presence of the king, the king asked him, why you got a long face, Nehemiah? This is not customary. What's the problem? What's your burden? He said, oh, that the walls and the gates of Jerusalem would be restored. The decree was written. The prophecy was spoken. And now it was a time for action. Hmm. My God, it's a time to return to repair the walls and the gates. If you go through just chapter 3 alone, it just goes on, and the valley gate was repaired. And Hanan and the inhabitants of Zenoah, they built it. And they were given names, and, they were, and then it goes on to say, and the dung gate was repaired. And it goes on to say, and there was an, um, in verse 16, they repaired the gate, and they repaired, and they repaired in verse 18, and they repaired, and they repaired in verse 20, and they repaired. It was, theme was repair, repair, repair. Or can I say, restore, restore, restore. What is the theme, saints? Restore us, Lord. But in this time, of restoration, or in the time of repairing of the gate, the burned gates and the torn down walls. In the time of it, there always comes the imps, the Sanballas and the Tobias, living amongst us, living amongst the people, trying to discourage the people. But guess what? Nehemiah was not discouraged. The Bible goes on in Nehemiah chapter 4. And, and we, we, we can see then that the scripture talks about some bellis. You know what it means? A prickly bush. You get a prickly nature? Don't be a some bellis. Don't be a cactus. But there's a some bellis and he heard that the walls were being, uh, we built the walls and he was wroth and he took great indignation, mocking the Jews. The brethren, what will these feeble Jews do? Will they fortify themselves? Will they sacrifice? Will they make an end in a day? Will they revive the stones of the heaps of the rubbish? But you know what I love? Verse 6, chapter 4, if you want to put that one down. It says, for the people had a mind to work. I'm looking at you. The people had a mind to work. They wanted to see the restoration and the repair take place. They had a mind to work. And it came to pass when Sambalath and Tobiah and the Arabians and the Ammonites and the Ashtonites heard that the walls of Jerusalem were made up and that the breaches were beginning to be stopped, then they were very wroth. And that's what people have gone, people have come, people go. And when they go, nobody goes without saying anything. Nobody just goes and goes and lives their life. They go and they're mad. They go and they get on their computers. They go and they got something to say. There's their Sambellus, there's the Tobias. But saints, you've got to determine that I am a Nehemiah. I am under prophecy of the king. Of kings. 
And I am going to see these walls restored. Your walls of protection and your gates that are the strength of the city. If the gates are burnt down, there is no protection. When an enemy goes to war, the first thing they do, is they want to find the best place to get in. And many times you think it's at the weakest spot that the devil wants to get you. But many times, they, the biggest spot is the most fortified spot, and they know that if they can tear that fortified spot down, they got the city. So not only do you have to guard your weak link, but you got to guard the very fortification of what is holding you and strengthening you, and that is the Word. Amen. Daily. In the Word. Daily. How do I be a strong Christian, Brother Branham? Read your Bible and pray every day. Fortify your gates. Fortify your walls. And they conspired against them to fight against Jerusalem and to hinder it. But what did, you, what did Nehemiah say? Nevertheless, we made our prayer Nevertheless, we made our prayer unto our God. First prayer. Not second place. First place. First prayer. I prayed unto God. I prayed unto our God and set a watch against them. Just in the day? Or just in the night? He made a watch day and night. Set a watch day and night. It's time to start setting watches. Not this watch. Not this daylight saving time. But to set a watch. To watch out for your children. Watch out for the church elders. To watch out that spirits don't come and to seek to divide and destroy and to conquer. We have to set a watch. Before you watch, pray. Great guards. Prayer and set a watch. Pray and watch God come on the scene for you. And Judah said, The strength of the bearer of the burden is decayed, and there's much rubbish so that we are not able to build the wall. Just get the rubbish out then. You got... Things within the hole that you need to throw out, throw it out. It's a city. We don't want your gates burned. We don't want your walls torn down. We want to build them up. And if there be rubbish that hinders the building, let's just get the rubbish out. They did. <laughs> and that's the part of the prophecy. It's, oh, there's too much rubbish, we can't build it. No, they got the rubbish out, and they rebuilt the wall. So then, why don't you just say that? I'll get the rubbish out, I'll start refortifying my walls. <laughs> You're under prophecy. It didn't discourage me that there was rubbish there. It's just that they moved it away. They got it out of their lives. And then they were able to build up. Everybody knows their own rubbish. I did take a psychology course in university. I think I passed the one, that one. And one, part of that course was to look at your garbage. Can you imagine taking a, paying good money to go to a psychology course to study garbage? But in studying garbage, it tells the actions, what the person's like. Oh, don't get quiet now. I'm not looking in your garbage can. I've never looked at one garbage can yet. But you, tell, you can see from discarded checks, from invoices that were thrown in, what the people eat. It just describes exactly their character. Your rubbish will tell you what you are. It would be wonderful to say, oh, Brother Tom, I've got no rubbish. <laughs> Boy, you got quiet all of a sudden. Don't just talk. I'm not even a garbage collector. 
Get it out. Just get it out, saints. Just get it out. It doesn't matter. It doesn't mean anything. Nothing is going to stop us fulfilling the prophesied promise of the change in the body. Nothing. Nothing was going to stop the walls from being built. Nothing. Nothing was going to stop the gates from being rebuilt. Nothing. Nothing. Oh, but, you know, you'll hear the discouraging word. Ten times the Bible says they came to them. Ten times. Saying, you can't fulfill the promise. You can't do this. You can't do that. Ten times. The devil just doesn't say it once. He's on your case time and time and time and time again. Now, you need to get on his case time and time and time again. Satan, get behind me. Satan, get behind me. I'm under a prophesied promise. of I'm, I'm under the spirit of watchfulness. Therefore, said I, look what his fortification was. Therefore, said I, in the lower places behind the wall and the higher places, I set the people after their families and with their swords, with their spears and with their bows. Notice it was family after family that was fortified behind the walls. Brother Matt, take your family. Do whatever you got to do. Stand with your sword. Take the spear. Not let the devil come in and destroy your wall. You can't do it. I want you to turn around and say, I can do it. Because Brother Bram said in the Holy Ghost series, the Holy Ghost will take the canter out of you. He said, I can't do it. No, the Holy Ghost will take the canter out of you. He said, I can't do that. Yes, you can. The Holy Ghost will take the canter out of you. You can do all things through Christ Jesus that strengthen you. Yes, you can. Yes, we can. Do, does the bride have a ministry to encourage one another? Can I ask you that question again? Does the bride have a ministry? What is that ministry, saints? To build you up in the faith. Brother Bram said this. He says, will the bride have a ministry before the rapture? That's what's going on right now. That's what's going on right now, 1963, after the seals. Questions and answers on the seals, actually. That's what's going on right now, the bride of Christ, sure. It's the message of the hour, see, the bride of Christ. She is, consists of apostles, prophets, teachers, evangelists, pastors, that right? That's the bride of Christ. She's got a ministry, a great ministry. She's got the ministry of the hour. It will be so humble. Where is the final voice? Under her messenger, she will be the final voice to the final age. She has a ministry. That's what the bride's got right now. How do you conquer the enemy? By being watchful, by energetic. Amen. Brother Bram said here, he said, now I'm here to help you. And I thought when I read that, Lord, I want to be here to help you. I want to help the bride. I want to do my part. But the said, I'm here to help you. And the only way I can help you is to point to Jesus Christ. I'm not pointing you to William Branham. I'm pointing you to the God of William Branham. I was humbled in China on a couple of occasions. I preached in, in Shanghai after Brother Ron flew back home. Brother Murphy and I, we had a couple more services with Brother Caleb. Sunday morning, I preached a service. And uh, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he shall show you all things. So I was preaching on all things. God showing you all things. And we had a wonderful time and a wonderful service. After the service, a sister from Zimbabwe came up to me. We were in the back room. She said, Brother Tom, do you remember the last time you were here, a year and a half ago? I said, absolutely I do. She says, you actually took a service when you're not supposed to take a service. I said, I remember it exactly. Brother Murphy left me high and dry. Brother Michael left me high and dry. I was all by myself with 25 brothers from Africa we, and sisters from Africa. We had a wonderful time. Brother Murphy thought we were going to have a testimony service. But the brothers came and said to me, Brother Tom, we didn't come all the way from the university for an hour and a half on a bus to hear testimony service. We want you to preach to us. Amen. I said, well, Brother Murphy said I'm not supposed to preach. Well, why don't you just exhort us then? So as we had been singing a few songs and giving some testimony, the scripture came straight into my heart. I said, I, I could probably expound on that. So I stepped to the pulpit, and they, they, they said, as soon as I stepped to the pulpit, they put, moved their chairs all in a half moon. And they pulled like never before. 
I think we preached an hour and a half. She came up to me this time. She said, Brother Tom, the, the service that you weren't supposed to have was a service for me. She said, I have been so changed from what you preached at that time. I have never been the same. Well, I said, sister, it's not me. It's the Spirit of God. It's the Word of God that's encouraging you in the faith. She says, and the service you preached this morning was exactly for me. I will never be the same again. I said, oh, that my heart would be like that. That I would come with that kind of expectation. That I'd come to church saying, I'll never be the same again. I'll be more watchful than I've ever been before. I'm under prophecy. I'll stay awake. I'll stay awake. Brother Bram said, I'm here to help you. And I got, I got the amen. Amen, Brother Branham. I'm here to help you. I want to help you in the faith. I want to encourage you in the faith. Brother, Brother Caleb, after the services in, in uh, Hanzhou, sat Brother Murphy, myself, down, Brother Ron. And he said, Brother Tom. I said, yes, sir. Brother, Brother Ron. Uh-huh. Brother Murphy. He said, I never came to see men. I came to see God in men. And he said, my life has been changed. I will never be the same again. What are they catching? They're catching the word in flesh. Not not that we're anything. It's he's everything. Brother Brandon was pointing us to Jesus Christ. And he said in one place, a true angel of God, a messenger, will always point you not to himself. I'm the great preacher. I'm the great evangelist. He will not point himself to himself. He will point to Jesus Christ. What a message we believe. I don't want to be acquainted with the message. I want to be an expression of the message. And just so that you know, don't get in your mind, and we've said it many times over the years, the message isn't William Branham. The message is not William Branham. You say, well, I believe in Brother Branham. Of course I do. Without the prophet, we've got no message. But he was to introduce us to Jesus Christ, the living word. The walls had been torn down. The gates had been burned by denominational years. But we're under prophecy that there will be a bride that takes the rapture. Malachi 4, he says, to see Malachi 4 fulfilled exactly what he said. A sign of the coming judgment. It's a burning fire that will destroy all unbelief. And the righteous will walk out on the ashes of the wicked. It's promised. It's prophesied. It's thus saith the Lord. It's got to be. What's his voice going to do? When this man comes on this scene, it's going to be a revealing of Jesus Christ. Promised word. That's exactly the only thing it can be. For the Bible said in Hebrews 13 and 8, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. This message came to give you a relationship with God himself, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. It didn't come to make us quotatious, even though that I say I am quotatious. It didn't come for us to memorize the message. It came for us to live the message. Brother Bram said in Gifts and Callings in 1950, he said, I am not a preacher or a great public speaker, but to me, he was the greatest preacher and the greatest public speaker. I'm not a preacher or a great public speaker, but from my heart, I'm trying to introduce to you Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. I'm setting you up for a trap. I'm setting you up for a trap. If he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, and that word was made flesh, and we say we are the word made flesh, 
then where is that word the same yesterday, today, and forever? In me. Amen. In me. In me. Hallelujah. As we said last week, Paul writing to the Colossians, continue in prayer and watch. Notice, prayer and watch. Nehemiah, prayer and watch. There's a continuity, prayer and watch. Prayer and stay awake. Prayer and get into the message. Prayer and read your Bible. Prayer and watch. Because without you being in it, saints of God, you're out of it. Stay in the word. Be a gregario. It's an imperative. It's a command to every believer that you have that sense of urgency. Things come in to water it down, water it down, water it down. Your, your smart devices are very smart. People say they're dumb. No, they're very smart. They're out to tear you down, to tear your walls down, to tear your gates down. But you've got to be now know Satan's devices. Know his tactics and fortify yourself in the word of God. Now watch, continue in prayer. Continue in prayer and watch in the same way. Giving thanks, praying for us that God would open to us a door of utterance. And we preach on it, a door of opportunity. If that door is closed or shut, we don't have that opportunity. But the Bible says here in Romans, I'm sorry, Revelation 4 and 1, and I looked and behold, a door was open to them. A great door was open in heaven. Open door. For us, an opportunity to preach the mysteries of God. Not to know about the mysteries, but to experience the mysteries. Men have preached for years on the mysteries of God. And the mysteries of God are not to tickle your intellect, but the mysteries of God are to become flesh in your body. A mystery is something, is a hidden Meaning, from those who have never been initiated. And in the initiation, there's an initiation process for a person to be a part of the mystery or part of a club. But without a born-again experience, as we said at the beginning of the service, there is no rapture. And once you've been initiated into the body of Christ, the mystery goes on to say that this mystery is unclear to the uninitiated, but crystal clear to those that have. It's the life of God contained in the whole word of God. It's something quite intelligible to, I'm sorry, it's something that's not intelligible to the uninitiated, but crystal clear to those that are the initiated, Brother Jim. A door of opportunity that the mysteries of God would be spoken. These kind of mysteries. Or can I say the mystery of, Brother Bram just listed them out and serves as this a time. The mystery of Israel's blindness during this age. The mystery of the translation of the living saints. The mystery of the church. The mystery of God even Christ as the incarnate fullness of the Godhead. The mystery of iniquity being found in Second Thessalonians. The mystery of the seven stars. In the hand of God. To people, to the uninitiated, they don't have a clue what we're talking about. But to those that have been initiated into the body, those mysteries are crystal clear. And has become substance within our lives. It's not head knowledge, but it's become life to us. These divine revealed mystery truths will literally turn the hearts of the children back to the faith of the fathers. Unintelligible to the uninitiated, but crystal clear to those that have been born again by the power of his word. Stay awake. Get in the word. There's an urgency. It's our fortification. Brother Bram said, when the enemy comes in like a flood to tear down your walls, God just makes his word more real. We get ready to close. I want you to just to ponder that. Lord, would you make your word more real to me? 
I don't want it to be a mystery. I want now it to become crystal clear to me. That at the sounding of the seventh angel's message, when he shall begin to sound, all the mystery shall be finished. What is it to do for you to fortify and strengthen and rebuild your fortification against the onslaught of the enemy that's coming in like a roaring lion. Look what's happening today. Brother Bram said in the Laodicean church age. He says, look where we're living. We all know we have been through the church ages. We're living in the last days of Laodicean church age. And this lazy, loose, happy-go-lucky, joking, sinful age of lust that we're now living in, now it's a wonder that God doesn't step back and say to the church, I'm just going to liquidate the whole group. Powerful statements. Powerful statements. I'm just going to liquidate the whole group. But there are people that are living under prophecy that are protected from that liquidation. She is not cannon fodder. She's not refuge. She's not garbage. She's the wonderment, uh, the prophet said in the church. She's the wonderment of all. See yourself as God sees you. See yourself as the masterpiece. See yourself as the fulfillment of the New Testament. See yourselves, Brother Bram said here, in fulfilling the word. The husband fulfilled the Old Testament, but the wife, she will fulfill the New Testament. Amen. We're under that prophecy. Don't cower back. Don't loosen up. Don't get lackadaisical. Don't get lazy. This is an urgent message. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. Musicians, please come. The word must deliver the word bride church. The word must deliver the word bride church. Lord, let this word deliver the word bride church. The church has got to be delivered out of her. A bride of Christ. Them that fell asleep in all the ages will make up the bride. Come out of that word and come on out. Like from your feet grow into your head, she gets greater and greater all the way. And then finally the head comes to it. The head of it will now, if now cause it, it's all linked. This body's linked to the head. The head does the turning, does the pulling. Lord, the head, which is Christ, has come to the body. It does the pulling. It does the turning. Lord, let that head take rulership and leadership within my heart. I just got this last quotation, oh, wake up, church. Brother Bram said in the message of Testimony in C, 1964, John had come on earth, and they said to him, well, the Bible said Elias was first to come. And he said, he's already come, and you didn't know it. So it'll be someday, they'll say, I thought this was to happen before the tribulation period. I thought the rapture was to take place. The words could come back, it's already happened, and you don't know it, uh-huh. It may be later than you think, and he ended up, oh, wake up, church. Oh, wake up. Stand on guard. Be concerned about one another. Be burdened for one another. Help one another in the faith. Help them build their wall. Help them strengthen them. Go minister to the body. Minister to your need. Has anybody ever hit your finger? Anybody ever hit your finger? You don't even think of your finger until you hit it. I didn't even think of my big toe the other night until I stubbed it on the, on the dresser. But I hopped around like a, you know, a kid, grabbing my foot and going, oh, 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 oh. Why? The whole body wants to minister to the sore part. So if it's a natural thing, the head does the leading, does the pulling, and there's a, bo- a body member here hurt. 
It's an automatic reaction to the body to try and comfort the sore part. Let's help one another build our walls. We're under that prophecy, saints of God. We've seen it in the word, the mothers, the fathers, the children. Everybody was a part in building the wall to keep away the enemy. Let's build up one another's walls. Let's stay awake. Let's be urgent. Let's watch over one another. Let's stand. Many things about tomorrow. I don't seem to understand, but I know who holds tomorrow. He's the one that holds my hand. Many things about say, well, Brother Tom, I don't understand all these mysteries and all the things. You don't have to understand it. You just believe it. 
And then while you're believing, God starts to reveal himself. And I just listened to the prophet this morning. He just said, just pray for revelation. He said, pray for revelation more than anything else. So Lord, make your word real to me. But the Bram said, he's the head of the body, which is his church bride. He's the head of the body, which is church bride. The bride body will follow the head. If the head has been united by a son of man ministry and this head is going to heaven, this body has to follow him all the way. Don't fall asleep at this time. This is the catching away. I would like you to do one favor for me. I'd like you just to do a 360 in your seat. Just turn around and look at people as you turn around. I want you to look at specific people. I want you to take a look at them. Have you seen them? Have you seen them beside you? Now, would you pray for them this week? Watch, pray, and watch. Pray for one another. I would that all men pray, what? Always. So now you've looked at them today. You've done a 360 degree. You probably didn't even think of them through the service. That's fine. But just pray one for another. Watch this body become closely knit together until we come into the unity of this great faith. Brother Marco, would you come please and close us in a word of prayer? Remember, prayer first, then watch. God bless you, Brother Marco. Lord, it's hard to come to the end of a service like this. and So thankful, Father, that you're always mindful of us, our needs, our walk with you, Lord Jesus. I'm always reminded of the one little line in the Bible, Enoch walked with God and was not. It seems so simple, Lord, and that's the pinnacle of the desires of our heart, Lord, is to walk with you every day, guide our footsteps. Lord, so many traps and snares sit be- beside us, Lord, and here a man of God comes behind the desk and says, just build up each other's walls, Lord. Raise my hand, Father, and anoint us, Father, to be so sensitive to your Holy Spirit. Even when we close our eyes to pray, Lord, to reach out to you, Brother Branham said that the secret was to get ourselves out of the way. And even when we pray, Lord, I ask that you would just help us get out of the way so we say the right thing. We bring it before your throne of grace. Bring this body closer together, Lord, and we may press this battle that we are in in this last and dreadful age, Lord Jesus. Lord, it would be miserable if there was, we didn't know what the end was, but we know that the end is a victorious bride, spotless, washed in your blood, Lord Jesus, and may we just hang on to that. Our souls hang on this, Lord, and we believe it with every being that's within us. So may we encourage us, each other this week. May we strengthen each other this week as we press the battle. I ask that you we restore Brother Tom as he's labored much, Lord, and prepare our hearts for tonight's service. May we come pulling just bind our hearts together, bring our liquor frames together. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. I'm amazed. I'm just amazed that he loves me. I'm amazed that he would come to my tent and open his word to me. Let's just sing that before we shake one another's hand. I'm amazed.
God bless you. Till we meet again this evening. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. God bless you.